Let's talk editing and why Adobe is simply better. Because you can't do stuff like this in DaVinci Resolve. Well, here's the thing. Sure you can. Now you might be a bit confused because for one, I'm not Dan Scott. Hi. And for two, you've probably read somewhere that DaVinci Resolve is cool, but it just can't compete with Adobe. Well, let's straighten this out because for one, I'm, st I'm still not Dan Scott. And for two, although Dan and I both believe strongly in educating creatives, we happen to live on opposite ends of the software spectrum. You see, Dan stays over here in Adobe land and I'm all the way over here in DaVinci country. That's me, Brandon, and I go by Wampus depending on what side of the internet you're on. I'm a freelance editor that focuses on helping people like you create. And like I said, I primarily live in good old Da Vinci City over here. So which side of the spectrum is better? The long unhelpful answer short is it depends, right? But, 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 to say that Da Vinci Resolve cannot compete with Adobe is just flat out wrong. So the follow-up question is what exactly can Da Vinci do? Can it edit like Premiere? You see, Premiere has been the standard for students and freelancers and small studios for decades at this point. It's more approachable than something like Avid, and it's got a more advanced tool set compared to something like Final Cut. Because unlike Final Cut or even a software like CapCut, Premiere can do everything you need, from basic text animations to even advanced AI features like extending your music track on the fly. But DaVinci can do that too. Mind you, for the past five to 10 years, it's always felt like DaVinci's been an update or two behind. When it came to the fundamental editing tool set, I've always felt like DaVinci's been on par, if not just a little bit better. There's great media management and you can sort through footage easily with the use of tags. And they even have a proxy generator that will generate low memory footage for you while you edit. There's optical flow and warping for speed ramping. You can auto generate captions and do keyframing in Resolve. And in my opinion, the editing itself just felt great. I've been using DaVinci exclusively to edit for the past five to six years now and it's always felt responsive and I feel like I'm in control of the things I wanna control. And it doesn't crash often. So when it comes to editing videos in the purest sense of the craft, I've always felt like DaVinci Resolve has been on par with Adobe, but it has been a bit behind in the smart features. That was until at the time of recording this, version 20 has officially come out of beta and it's now in a full release state. And 20 has been massive. For DaVinci Resolve. Music Remixer, we got it now. Auto Podcast Editing, yep. Spline Editor on the edit page, sure enough. Everything from a best takes finder through IntelliScript, which will look through your footage and take out the best takes of a certain recording, stack them together and put it on a timeline automatically for you to a new point and click masking model. Are they as polished as Adobe? Kind of. It's difficult to do an entire feature comparison of all of the tools in Adobe and DaVinci, but I think it's more important that you can do a feature comparison. Meaning that I think DaVinci Resolve is more of a competitor to Premiere than it's ever been. You're gonna be really hard pressed to find one thing that the other can't do. So with that said, when it comes to just editing videos, both are great. I personally enjoy the DaVinci Resolve experience a little bit more, obviously, because I just tend to find it smoother and more responsive, but you're not gonna go wrong with either Premiere or DaVinci. The elephant in the room, and one of the supposed advantages that Adobe has over DaVinci Resolve is the creative cloud, because nothing can match Premiere and... And if you're unfamiliar, After Effects is the program in Adobe that's gonna give you the ability to do advanced text animations, motion graphics, 3D camera work, compositing, it's kind of what unlocks the advanced editing tools in the Adobe ecosystem. <laughs> this, I think, is probably gonna put me in some hot water with the creative community. And mind you, I, I'm not the best editor. I'm not the best motion graphic artist. I just, you know, I do YouTube videos. But I don't think After Effects is better than Fusion. I don't. And before anybody gets too upset and you have a right to be upset, just let me explain myself for a minute or two. Now, before I go any further, if you are a hobbyist or somebody who is just learning how to edit, I would really recommend starting with DaVinci. Obviously, I'm pretty biased here, but the reason I say that is because DaVinci Resolve has a completely free version. Yes, free. There's no strings attached. There's no watermarking. There's no catch to this. You can use the entire software, mostly, for free. So again, if you are just getting started out, just give DaVinci a download. You'll figure out if you like it or not 
really fast. And if you are looking to learn how to edit and do more advanced things inside Resolve, I'm gonna be teaming up with Dan and the team at Bring Your Own Laptop to develop a dedicated DaVinci Resolve course. It'll take you from any level to being completely proficient and comfortable in DaVinci Resolve, so be sure to check out the full DaVinci Resolve course, link in the description. You see, Adobe has the Creative Cloud, which will give you access to programs like Audition for audio and After Effects for animation and compositing. These, along with the rest of the cloud, build out a comprehensive suite in pieces, meaning that you can use After Effects for a project you set up in Premiere Pro, but you have to bounce back and forth between the two programs, which often forces users to pick. Do you start in Premiere or After Effects? If you know your video is going to need motion graphic work or more advanced visual effects, where do you start? Either way, you might have to compromise something. Fusion is built directly into DaVinci Resolve, and if you want to get into it, all you have to do is click this magic wand. After Effects is often correlated with motion graphics, which it's great at, but not only can Fusion do motion graphics, it's also a Hollywood caliber compositor and visual effects tool, meaning it is powerful enough to put together full 3D composited scenes if you wanted to, but simple enough that you and I can easily use it. For example, let's say I have this clip here. However, well, if I want to, all I gotta do is go down to the bottom here and click this magic wand. And now we're in Fusion. I can do simple things like keyframing a transform node and adjusting our spline directly from inside Fusion. However, I could do some motion graphics like highlighting my face. However, any kind of effect that you can think of like tracking and stabilization. However, to building out your own custom visual effects. However, you can do all these things quickly within Fusion. And again, you might think that this isn't that big of a deal because again, if you're in Premiere and you wanna use After Effects, well, I just open After Effects. But I cannot tell you how many projects I've worked on where I just wanna do something in Fusion quickly because I know it'll be faster than the edit page and I can just do it with one click. And Fusion in itself is my favorite part of DaVinci Resolve. It's what I end up talking about the most and it is criminally underappreciated. I will say it again. Fusion is criminally, crim it's so underappreciated for what it can do. Let's say you wanna make a custom visual or graphic for the video that you're working on. Well, Fusion's node-based system is the perfect solution for this. And nodes can be extremely intimidating for people who are just getting started, but I will die on the hill that nodes are infinitely better than layers. If you're in After Effects, when you're working with one or two things, layers might not be a problem, but when you begin to work on bigger and more advanced compositions, dealing with hundreds and hundreds of layers becomes visually very difficult to manage. And while node trees might feel intimidating, they offer a very manageable and dynamic way to control your composition. Visually and graphically, I can see what is getting fed what information. And if you ever have to troubleshoot, I can quickly cycle between my different nodes and how they are built on top of each other to determine exactly what is affecting what. Again, visually, it might feel intimidating to work with nodes, but once you get used to the merge system inside Fusion, it almost becomes impossible to go back to layers. And Fusion also has things like modifiers, and they also have expressions to do more complicated and advanced animations. It's quite simply put, an incredible tool. At the end of the day, is After Effects on top? I, I, maybe. There are certain things After Effects can do that Fusion can't do easily. So when it comes to like text work or motion graphic works, I think After Effects is a stronger set of tools to do those things. But just like the edit page, I think Fusion is one, if not two updates behind. And when I talk about After Effects being able to do certain things, it doesn't mean that Fusion can't do those things. There has not been one thing in Fusion that I have not been able to do that I've wanted. At the end of the day, if you wanna argue for After Effects, I hear you, I know you guys can do cool things. But the one thing that you guys will not be able to argue is color. And I really don't have a lot to say here. Uh, DaVinci Resolve's color page is the best. There, it's, it's the industry standard. Even if you do end up using Premiere, a lot of times you will export it to then do color in DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve actually started out as a color grading and color correction software first, and then began to add on the other tools, which is why some of them feel a little bit behind but the color page in itself is leaps and bounds ahead of anything else out there. And again, you can use the color page for free, for free. You can go and use it right now for free. Now I would do a massive disservice to the page itself and any colorist out there by trying to cover this in a couple of minutes, but 
Here's what I'll say. You see, the color page is incredible. It has every imaginable tool that you could want to use for whatever you're trying to grade, which is again, my favorite part of DaVinci Resolve. You have options. For example, I'm in the process of grading this footage here for the podcast that I'm editing. Well, let's say for whatever reason, I just don't like this shade of blue on his jacket. But what I can do is I can click on one of these nodes over here, go over to my color warper tool and just grab the blues and slide it around. And you can see very quickly that we can change the hue of our blue. And like I said, there are options. So they have a whole suite of curves that you can use to also affect the colors in your footage. So again, I can click on the blue note here and desaturate a little bit or overdo it. They've got curves for hue versus luminosity as well. So again, blue, if I want to brighten it up a bit, darken it a little bit, I can do that very quickly. And if I want to adjust my skin tones real quick, well, I can go over to my qualifier tab, turn on our preview here, drag and select our skin tones and then clean it up really quick, maybe smooth it out a little bit. And we can even add on a power window here to kind of hyper focus in on his face. Now, just like Fusion, the color page can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Say I'm working with my original footage for this video. Well, if all I really wanted to do was just white balance this image, I could go over to my little drop over here click on my white t-shirt and bang. I can then add a new node by hitting Alt and S and now I can go to my curves and maybe boost up the highlights a little bit. And without doing anything besides white balancing and adding a little brightness, we've gone from this to this. It's a small change, but it really helps your videos feel a little bit more professional. Now I'm not gonna cover the Fairlight page or the cut page of DaVinci, but just know it does have a full on audio mixer with all the audio tools that you would find in something like Audition. But with all that said, should you do DaVinci or should you do Adobe? <laughs> well, I think we've established what team I'm on, but for somebody like you, what might fit best? Well, a big deciding factor for a lot of people is gonna be cost, so let's break it down. Like I've mentioned a few times, DaVinci Resolve has a free version. It's completely free. There's no strings attached. There's no time limit. There's no watermarking. You can use the entire program for free. And I'll cover what this asterisk means in just a second, but if you are a hobbyist or somebody who just wants to, again, get into editing, use the free version. I, I just, I don't understand any argument against just trying out the free version. You will have access to the edit page, the fusion page, Fairlight, the color page for free. And if down the road you want to transfer to Premiere or Adobe, I promise the skills you learn in DaVinci will transfer over. It's not like it's their different universes that they're in. The only thing that you will be limited to are the smart features in DaVinci Resolve. And that's gonna cover anything that uses their AI tools or their neural engines. So things like the music remixer, or if you wanna use Magic Mask, that like auto masking tool, you're not gonna be able to do that in the free version. And if you're more curious about what's in the free and what's in the paid version, you can either go to their website or there are some great videos on YouTube covering which is in which. But if you are somebody who is looking to get more serious into editing or do some more advanced things, let's talk DaVinci versus Adobe when it comes to cost. There's two routes you can go down with Adobe. One, you do the entire Creative Cloud suite. That's gonna include things like Photoshop, After Effects, Lightroom, it's the entire suite and that's gonna be around the time of recording this, 60 bucks a month. Or you can just do Premiere and After Effects and you would have to pay for each of those softwares individually and the two of them together are gonna to be around $46 a month before tax. Over the course of a year, that's gonna cost you either $720 or around $550 again before tax. Now, Adobe often does like promotional things or if you're a first time user, they will run discounts and sales. So you can definitely do that for less than, you know, $700 a year, but you are looking at paying a couple hundred dollars per year. On the opposite end of the spectrum, DaVinci has their studio version, which is their paid version of the software. Now the studio version or just studio is gonna include everything that we've talked about, all the smart features, all the AI tools, everything's gonna be included in the studio features and it's a one-time payment of right now, $295. But the best part of DaVinci Resolve is up until now, if you bought Studio once, that's it. You don't have to pay for it again. Meaning that when I bought DaVinci Resolve Studio five years ago, I have not paid a single dollar since. I've gotten every single update for free. However, I would be remiss not to mention that Blackmagic Design, the company behind DaVinci Resolve, has hinted that they might start charging for major updates. This would be similar to the Affinity model if you're familiar, but every time there's a major update and normally that's like every couple years, you would have to pay another probably a couple hundred dollars. But as of now, it is pay once, own forever. So even if they do start charging for updates, you can still own your older version of Resolve. 
It's not gonna be like Adobe, where if you stop paying for the monthly subscription, you can't use the software anymore. So where does that take us? Well, if you are somebody who is in the editing world and you are gonna end up working for an editing studio, a lot of times you're not gonna have a choice. You'll probably be integrated into the Adobe ecosystem and you'll have to learn how to use Premiere or After Effects. And again, I don't think that Premiere or After Effects are bad tools. Obviously, they are incredible. However, if you are a creator or a freelance editor, or you are somebody who is just tired of paying the Adobe subscription, there are options and DaVinci Resolve is a really, really good choice. What I normally say is this, try the free version. And if at a certain point you feel like you wanna swap over to Premiere, then go ahead, swap to Premiere, swap to After Effects, go crazy. Or if there is a point where you really like DaVinci and you wanna to upgrade to Studio, do it. So there's no pressure to pay for Studio until you feel like you need some of those Studio tools. I think the only area that I begin to get frustrated when it comes to comparing the two is when people just say DaVinci Resolve can't do what Adobe can. I just, again, I think that's wrong. But what's held you back from using DaVinci Resolve in the past? Does it feel intimidating to learn or use? Again, be sure to check out the full DaVinci Resolve Essentials course linked in the description. And thank you for having me over here on Bring Your Own Laptop.